This is BBC News and these are the top stories developing at 11. Also coming up in the next hour, Britain's economy grew at its slowest pace for more than five years in the first three months of the year. Hello, a very good morning to you. It is Friday the 27th of April. I'm Anita McVeigh and welcome to BBC Newsroom Live. And we begin with that news after oh, much speculation since the birth on Monday. The royal baby has been named in the last few minutes. The prince's official title will be His Royal Highness Prince Louis Arthur Charles of Cambridge. Now on to the day's other Big news and the leaders of North and South Korea have declared their commitment to work towards the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. A joint statement released in the last hour after historic face-to-face -face talks between Kim Jong-un and Moon Jae-in said there would be no more war on the peninsula. Rupert Wingfield Hayes, well, to uh, reaction now, and the United States says it hopes the summit will achieve progress towards a future of peace and prosperity for the entire Korean Peninsula. A White House statement said the U.S. wished the uh, Korean people well, and, uh, of course, this summit is being seen as a prelude to a summit uh, now to one of those headline stories, because growth in the economy slowed sharply in the first three months of the year. The Office for National Statistics says it grew by 0.1 percent. That's the slowest pace in more than five years. The snow over the period had some impact, particularly in construction and some areas of retail. But the ONS said its overall effect was limited, with the bad weather boosting energy supply and online sales. My colleague Alice Baxter is with me now. Hi, Alice. I mean, retailers, high street retailers, reporting results for the first three months of the year. They certainly have been talking about the beast from the east being a factor, but actually, overall, its effect is more nuanced, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely right. And as you mentioned, what the Office for National Statistics has been saying on that front, the impact of the bad weather that we saw at the beginning of the year, the so-called beast from the east, was partly to blame for this much lower than expected uh, growth number but in many ways it actually helped to boost the economy we spent more on our heating bills we spent more on online shopping the main culprits here was actually the drop that we saw in construction and also people staying away from the high street people spending less retail that suffered a real downturn so is that more to do with people reining in their spending rather than the impact of the weather. Yes, I, I think all of this speaks to a wider picture here that actually the prospect of higher inflation this year, uncertainty over the Brexit withdrawal is actually taking its toll on companies and consumer spending more than expected. I mean, let's not forget this is the slowest pace of growth that we've seen now since the fourth quarter of 2012. It comes in at the very bottom of what economists were predicting. We were expecting a drop to about 0.3%, potentially 02 No one was really expecting this 0.1% uh, growth. And what this potentially then means going forward is, uh, will we see this rate rise that many had expected come May the 10th, a quarter of a percent? Within the market, the odds of that rise has now dropped to below 50 percent. The Bank of England uh, starts its meetings next week to talk about that. And talking about the markets, sterling, the pound, in the aftermath of this announcement from the ONS, we saw the pound drop to an eight-week low against the dollar. And conversely, that sent the FTSE 100 blue chip much higher because it's full of these multinational uh, exporting companies that earn in dollars. So a weaker pound actually boosts the FTSE. How much of an impact do you think this anticipated rise in interest rates is having or has had on these figures? Uh, I, I, I think it all plays a part, doesn't it? I think uncertainty over what is happening uh, within uh, those Brexit negotiations and then also this prospect of higher inflation above target inflation this year, all of this has uh, played into this downturn in uh, consumer confidence and also the confidence that business is having uh, to bring about this, as I say, much lower than expected uh, growth rate, expanding by just 0.1 of a percent. Just as we speak, Alice, uh, some copy from a spokesman for Theresa May asked if Brexit uncertainty has had an impact on this uh, GDP figure, says the economy has continued to grow after the referendum, mm -hmm. which it has. Let me just take you through uh, the spokesman saying GDP figures are clearly disappointing, but the fundamentals of the economy 
are strong. So that's what people will be looking at now. Are those fundamentals as strong as they would like them to be? Well, we could only go on the data we've had out today. Construction fell considerably in the first three months of this year. Uh, retail spending fell considerably. Of course, we haven't actually Brexited yet, so uh, we're all talking about the, the prospect of these negotiations that we're about to enter into. Uh, the fundamentals, uh, you know, they vary. Uh, but uh, and are, are open to interpretation depending on, on, you know, what perspective you're taking on all of this. Indeed, indeed. But, you know, the fact remains that the economy for the first three months of 2018 fell to its lowest uh, rate of expansion since the last quarter of 2012, growing by just 0.1 of a percent. That was comes in at the very bottom of what economists had been expecting. That number might be revised upwards, but for now it stands. Okay, Alice, thank you very much. Alex, Alice Baxter. Now, the Home Office has come under fresh criticism after 35 hospital trusts accused officials of putting patient safety at risk by blocking visas for 100 trainee doctors from India. The overseas medics were offered jobs as part of a postgraduate training scheme, but were then refused permission to work in the UK. Here's our health correspondent, Dominic Hughes. Hello, a very good afternoon to you. It is Friday the 27th of April. I'm Anita McVeigh and welcome to BBC Newsroom Live. The leaders of North and South Korea have declared their commitment to work towards the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. A joint statement released a short while ago after historic face-to-face -face talks between Kim Jong-un and Moon Jae-in said there would be no more war on the peninsula. Well, the South Korean leader Moon Jae-in and North Korea's Kim Jong-un met at the border. This is the moment that Mr. Kim, smiling, was beckoned across the uh, military demarcation line into the south by his counterpart, President Moon. And then unexpectedly, uh, Mr. Kim invited Mr. Moon to step into the north for a brief moment. More symbolism followed as the leaders jointly planted a 65-year-old commemorative pine tree uh, signifying peace and prosperity and to mark the 65 years since a North Korean leader last entered the South. Well, these talks are being seen as an important precursor to the summit between President Trump and Kim Jong-un later this summer. President Trump has welcomed what he's calling the end of war in Korea, tweeting, good things happening, but only time will tell. Our correspondent Rupert Wingfield Hayes was at the border of the two countries as the leaders met. Liz Truss, now uh, a bit of breaking news for you from the world of music. After uh, 35 years away from the recording studio, ABBA are going to record some new songs. Uh, you may have seen the story that they are uh, working on uh, an ABBA stage show, but not them on stage, the actual band, rather avatars or avatars uh, as they're being called. So this statement from ABBA says the decision to go ahead with the existing avatar tour project had an unexpected consequence. We all four felt that after some 35 years it could be fun to join forces again and go into the recording studio. So we did. Uh, they say it was like time had stood still and they'd only been away on a short holiday. An extremely joyful experience which has resulted in two new songs. So uh, that will be uh, welcome news to ABBA fans around the world, I'm sure. Now, the time is uh, coming up to 10 to 1. Uh, we're going to get more now on the Labour activist Mark Wadsworth, who's been expelled from the Labour Party for bringing it into disrepute after launching a verbal attack on the MP Ruth Smeath at the launch of an official Labour report into anti-Semitism. For more stories about crossing divides, you can go to bbc.co.uk forward slash crossing divides. In a moment we'll have the news at one with Ben Brown but first here's a look at the weather with Helen Willits.